What's up, everyone, and welcome to episode 238 of Two Amazon Sellers in a Microphone, brought to you by Solozo. Uh, and today, you know, these are our favorite, Chris, is when we can get somebody on and talk about their seller journey. I think these stories just, they're so helpful to everyone who's listening, anyone who's getting started on their journey or is struggling along their journey, just hearing stories uh, of people who've, who've made it through, have found success, probably lots of mistakes in there as well. Uh, but it's, it's fun to hear these stories and we've got a great one. This is a, it, it's an amazing story. Ryan Maya from Beyond Braid. And we just have to say this up front, $352,000 last month of fishing line on Amazon. It's incredible. It's talking yes. about six, six figures a month uh, on Amazon selling fishing line. I mean, that's a great story right off the bat. So Ryan, thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, guys. Thank you for having me for sure. We, uh, we're excited. We just want to dive in right away and just when we start with your journey, we'll start from the beginning. What made you, what were you doing beforehand? How'd you get started? Why don't you just take us through uh, a little bit of your journey so far? Yeah. I'll try to keep it quick. Cause sometimes I drag it on, but uh, I'm right. 25. I'm 25. Um, I started drop shipping in college. My cousin had a drop shipping course one time and he's like, Hey, go look into this. So long story short, I tried like dozens, literally 12 different businesses trying to drop ship. And I had success with the first one, which was a fishing store. And then once it's a seasonal product, once it was out of season, the store went to crap and I was like, I got to start over. So I tried to start a bunch of different things. Long story short, Fast forward, I think two years later, I visited fishing again. And that's when I really learned marketing. I really learned how to run Facebook ads and really learned that side of the business. And that's what kind of took off. So I found my winning product, which was Fishing Line. And I was still drop shipping it at the time. And I graduated college and I ended up going to work um, a regular day job um, in real estate, investor relations for... Uh, a big billionaire. It was a private equity firm. Super cool job. So I ended up selling my drop shipping business for fifty thousand dollars. Wow. Uh, there was a two month negotiation. Forty four up front. Six thousand dollars after two months of training. The guy I sold it to. The business kind of fell apart. And at the end of the two months, I was like, "Hey, I can help you hire someone, or I can take back fifty one percent and run the business." So I got fifty one percent of the business back with no capital out of my pocket. We continue to drop ship for a couple months. But my business partner, he is a COO of a publicly traded company. I don't know why he does these online businesses on the side. I guess he just <laughs> likes it. Um, so we're like, how do we scale this thing? And it's saying, hey, we should make our own brand of fishing line. So that's where it started. Uh, we decided in, I was like January 1st, 2020. Uh, hey, let's make our own brand. Beyond Braid was born. We didn't get our first shipment of inventory until April 20th, 2020. That's when the ads went live on Facebook. We weren't even on Amazon first. So uh, ads went live. I already knew what I was doing. I already knew how to make ads for Fishing Line. And within the first week, we were already up to like three to $4,000 a day coming in, coming in, coming in hot. And quickly realized uh, the whole inventory situation is a huge completely different game and we ran out of inventory in like two weeks and our lead time for our product is like 60 days so um we got all that long story short wrapping it up we now sell on shopify to our website amazon ebay walmart we even have um over 100 retail locations that we sell to now um and we're in the process of getting into the biggest fishing retailer uh, which is Bass Pro. We're starting off with a dropship program with them. We're just integrating some stuff and then hopefully getting into uh, their stores. And this all started from a dropshipping store in college. I don't even know where to start. <laughs> <laughs> I try to keep it short, but sometimes I drag. There's just so many things going on there. Like, what? Let's go back. What? Why fishing? What made you get into fishing? Is that the stuff you got passionate about? Um. So I have two older brothers. And they've been fishing their whole lives. My dad's been fishing since he was young. So naturally, I just was brought up in a fishing family. And when I started that first store, I really just wanted to pick something that I knew about. Um, and that's what I tell most people, because the 12 stores after that I tried that first uh, after that first store was I tried selling makeup tools. I tried selling like necklaces, party gear, college gear. And I didn't know much about it, but I know a lot about fishing. So I know how to speak the lingo. I know about what 
fishing brands are supposed to look like. So that's something I always talk about is, hey, start a business, try to, especially a product-based business, uh, try to focus on an industry that you either know about, you already, it's already a hobby of yours because you're just going to have a little bit more success because you already have the product knowledge, you know? So when you did the drop shipping or in the fishing uh, category, was the braided fishing line one of the best sellers at that time? Or were there, or is that how you figured out to use or to go with the braided line or like what yeah, happened there? That was kind of the big break was I started selling. I was like, all right, let me just try selling blue colored fishing line or yellow colored uh, braided fishing line. And then braided line is different than monofilament line, which is like the traditional clear line fishermen use. So I was, I had different angles to attack in my ads, like, hey, braided line is stronger, braided line casts further, braided line um, will last longer. So things like that, that's what made my ads different. And then the big, big break was uh, the, the, the supplier I was working with uh, came out with a camo fishing line. So um, give me one sec, I actually have some right here. Ugh. Oh, forgive me. I was making some TikTok ads, so it has like a little face on it, but <laughs> the color... Uh, is this blue camo stuff. And it was just, again, another interesting topic to talk about in my ads. And that's kind of what blew it up was really figuring out how to market the product because it's not a, a revolutionary product. There was other companies selling camo braid, but I was able to take a stance in my ads and convince people to click on my ads and buy because I made the product seem so unique, which it is. It's a, a unique product, but it's all about that marketing angle that you take. You went a different route than normal people would. Not normal. I shouldn't say that. But like when then normal entrepreneurs or normal sellers would do, they would go straight to Amazon, test it out that way because that's where the traffic at. You, this is difficult to get people to come to your website to buy. You have to have a converted website. You have to run ads. Uh, talk yeah. us through that process. Yeah. So I, I, again, I'm I'm flip. I, I did the flip side of what probably normally your audience. Um, does I started solely drop shipping and Facebook ads. So I probably didn't get on Amazon, I think until the end of our first summer of selling. So I was selling, we started in April, April, May, June, June probably like four or five months of selling the brand just to our website, which we were crushing it. Like I think our ROAS was like, like a four ROAS. So to, to break that down for every dollar we were spending on advertising on Facebook ads, we were seeing $4 come in. And I just didn't have enough inventory to keep up. And then I was like, all right, we finally have a brand. Let me branch off into other channels. Let me, I, I, like Amazon was confusing to me. I, it was a channel that I never explored before. Um, actually in college, there was a point where I was like, hey, all right, I want to open up another business. And there was two businesses. I want to start an ATM business or get into Amazon because I already sell products online. And I decided to go with the ATM business because Amazon just seemed too complicated. I bought two ATMs. Long story short, that business failed. I sold the ATMs. But um, yeah, I, I got onto Amazon four or five months later. The first year was really slow because we were just figuring out the whole platform, figuring out FBA. Should we hire an agency? Should we not? And then it just took off. The past year it absolutely took off. And we're, we're just growing month over month over month um, currently right now. Like last month was our best month ever on Amazon. So it was amazing. So when you did that first, went back on the Shopify site, mm -hmm. what was your first initial order? Like, were you trying to prove a concept first before you placed a big, you know, big thousands of orders? Or did you just order the inventory first and just run the ads? Because I, I feel like you're a really good marketer. So you knew you were going to sell anyway. So yeah. I'm just, what'd you do there? Yeah. So that's the thing. I felt so confident in spending all this money on inventory and building a brand. Like our first order was $40,000 because to do fishing line uh the M the minimum order quantities are really expensive but i i was confident because i had been drop shipping for two years so in my drop shipping career i think i did like half a million in sales of basically this product this, this blue camo fishing line it just had another logo on it right um so i knew what ads worked i it was me and my ads literally it was my my cell phone recording i would give it to my girlfriend i'm like hey reach while we're fishing or something and i'll just say hey guys it's ryan with uh, the company was called Fishing King Supply. Check out our new camo braid. It's super cool. It looks awesome. So I was really good at making those ads. So I knew once we started a brand and we had inventory and I clicked go on those ads on Facebook, I just like I knew they were going to go. And like I said, I clicked go. 
The first day was like a thousand. The second day was fifteen hundred in sales. Uh, the third day was like three thousand, thirty five hundred, four thousand. So like I knew right away that the the product worked and my ads worked. And we were actually spending so much so quickly that Facebook shut our ad down. So that whole business went on pause. So it's a whole different beast. But I'm I, I like that route better because I already had proof of concept from drop shipping with minimal uh, risk, right? Because I, what I see a lot of people doing is they just dive directly into a product. They buy a bunch of inventory, hoping it sells when they just really don't know. There's no proof of concept for themselves. This happened to my own girlfriend. She tried Amazon FBA when I was first getting into Amazon on the side and she tried selling aprons on Amazon and she spent like two grand on inventory, which for her was a lot of money because she's still in college and never really had a full-time income and it flopped she sold like 20 of them and then she ended up just liquidating the uh, inventory to amazon and she was out 2500 bucks so that was the, the key for me was i was just so confident in my ability to sell fishing line because i had done it before let's go to uh this, i know you got questions i'm just no, I keep got going. A list, i got good. a list here mm -hmm. uh let's go to the branding side of it i want to talk about the branding and then i want to talk about facebook ads so yeah. branding, like creating brand names, I love doing that. Like, I, I think it's fun, like to come up with a brand name and then see if it's trademarked and then get a trademark and then try to like come up with the, you know, the design and stuff. How'd you come up with the name Beyond Braid? Uh, so I literally just sat there with a pen and paper and wrote down a bunch of names that I thought were cool. And there was probably a list of about 25 of them. And we narrowed it down to like three of them. I think it was Riptide Braid uh rhino braid and then beyond and then obviously my, my brother is a huge fisherman like very very legit fisherman um and i would just always bounce ideas off of him kind of put stuff on my i'm say like my personal instagram say hey guys like what do you think about this name and obviously my partner bouncing ideas off of him and then we just uh, beyond braid just sounded really and we have uh my partner so his their business is a publicly traded media company so he has access to graphic designers. So we work with a graphic design. He has a graphic designer that just helps out with all our designs. And he was making designs for, uh, we narrowed it down to Riptide Braid and Beyond Braid. And he just made the Beyond Braid logo. And I was looking at them side by side. I'm like, just looks really clean and really good. So let's go with that one. And that's that's how it started. How do you how do you find how do you find your business partner? Like that's something like how do you partner up with somebody like just google it like i'm sure that doesn't work so, so how do you find I a sold my, yeah i sold my business so i sold my business on uh shopify exchange marketplace exchange i forget the website but there's flippa.com and marketplace exchange those are two websites to sell online businesses amazon businesses sell there all the time and he bought the business so I, when he bought the business i think i was 20 20 or 21 and like I sold my, I had 50 K hit my account and I was like in shock. You know what I mean? So that's how, uh, the job I was working, it was, uh, a sales job. I was raising investments from, from high net worth individuals for real estate. So this, I, and I was learning sales skills. So I used the sales skills in the job I was at to basically close the guy on this website. And basically all I was selling was a website because there was no inventory at the time. It was just a website name, an ad account. I'm like, hey, this works with this. And when I sold the business to him, the business was creating like $5,000 of profit per month. So it was, it was a good deal. He just, he, I think he bought it for his wife at the time or his girlfriend to run. And I was working with her. She just couldn't figure it out. She wasn't computer savvy. So it just didn't work out. And then he's a really, really cool guy. He's got, he's got a good amount of money. And I was just like, hey, man, these are the options. I can help you hire like a VA to run the ads and run the store or just give it back to me 51%. I need to be in control. We'll split the profits. And the goal was actually just to try and sell it again in like a month or two. So I was like, "That's it. we'll just split the profits. And when we sell it, I'll give you 10 grand on top. And he said, all right, done deal. And I think he got the deal of a lifetime because now he makes a lot of money from, from, what, from that little $50,000 investment, you know? That's a great story and way to, I mean, that's creative pivoting too. I mean, and, and for him, I mean, both of you saw the opportunity um, and, and made it work. I think that's, that in itself is interesting just for,
for other people to think about. There's opportunities to to partner, get involved. Totally. If, things, if things go a different way, pivot. Especially at a young age. I mean, yeah. I was taking that's Jager young. bombs at 21. I wasn't worried about <laughs> <laughs> when I'd making business, you know, like that's, that's, uh, that's impressive. Yeah. Yeah. I've been, I've been entrepreneurial. I'd say my whole life growing up, my dad had his own business. And during the last recession, he kind of had to close it down. But like ever since I was little, I was always uh, just like trying to sell things in middle school. I was selling candy. There was in middle school, dude, I was selling candy bars, buying them for 50 cents for a dollar. There was times I was making like 200 bucks a day and I would have scaled that business so hard. But I got in trouble because it got to the point where my big ass backpack, I wasn't bringing anything to school, just candy. And I was literally selling out. It was crazy. Um, so I did that. I, I, I flipped iPhones in high school. I called the business was called cash for iPhone. So I'd buy it uh, from my friends, for like a hundred bucks, sell it on eBay for 300 back when you can actually make some money on an iPhone. So that's kind of how it all started. I saved my money, saved my money. And then when I got into drop shipping, even more save, save, save with all those profits coming in and just had some money to, to put into this business. So that's kind of how it all started. How do you deal with uh, the update of iOS with Facebook ads? How do you uh, how do you how do you pivot from that? How do you how do you still scale those ads up? Yeah, it's 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 Facebook is nowhere near what it used to be. Um, like I said, we were spending a dollar and making four dollars back. Now we're lucky if we spend a dollar and make two dollars back. So mm. it's definitely harder. There's third party apps that we use that um, help fusion. What that means is like you can track your ads better. So if you spend a dollar, you can actually see if it's making money or not because Facebook is just missing a lot of things because it's harder to track data because of what Apple did. Um, but it got to the point where you just had to try a bunch of different things, make a whole bunch of different ads. We <clears throat> introduced email marketing, which I'd never done before. Um, and basically for a while, the strategy was let's break even getting customers on Facebook, right? So let's say our break even cost per per customer was $30. We'd spend 30 customer and then we would just kind of make money on the back end through email marketing and Amazon because that's when Amazon was slowly doing better for us. So that's almost still kind of the business model cuz Facebook is so tough right now. Like it's it's nowhere near what it used to be. So like I said, we didn't do email marketing before. Last month, we did $70,000 alone just from email marketing, right? And that's just the list that we build, right? I think our list is like 75,000 people. So it's just all these different things that have come together in a brand. That's what I love about building a brand is because you're building equity in a vehicle that eventually we could, like I can sell this business and cash out, right? Because it has the list. It has the returning customers. Our returning customer rate is like 25%, which is amazing, direct to our store. Um, Amazon's growing. Shopify's growing. eBay, we, we do sales there. So it's, it's all of these things in a brand that come together. But yeah, Facebook, very, very difficult. But if you can out and get the ball rolling, and honestly, that's the strategy of some companies is just to break even long enough spend enough money and then just hit them on the back end with either a subscription or email marketing. Like I, I know this guy, he was selling your oil for like arthritis and stuff. He scaled the business to $150,000 a day, breaking even on the front end. He was selling the product for $24. The cost of the product was 20 or uh, the cost of the acquisition and the cost of the product was $23. He was barely breaking even, but then he would just hit him back with a subscription and sell it to them for $10 instead of $25. And he was crushing. I think he said that business did like 15 million a year for him for like a couple of years, which is crazy. Yeah, I love that subscription model. The subscription model is, is fantastic. Even on Amazon, I love it. It's just a, it's a good like reoccurring revenue coming in. 100%. How do you treat, how do you treat Shopify and Amazon? Are you separating them out? Like do you have certain SKUs only on Amazon and certain SKUs only on Shopify? Or you just treat them all as one and just they all kind of come in at the same time. Like, how do you do you separate those out at all? I think we lost him. Uh oh, he froze up. Dang, this we're gonna... good. Oh, yeah, we'll wait. We'll wait for him to come back. There he is. Oh. There he is. Am I good? You're, You're good. Now. You're back. Okay. So, the, the thing that uh sucks about my business is the amount of SKUs. So, 
fishing line, we have now have a bunch of different colors. We have a bunch of different yards. So 300 yards, 500 yards, 2000 yards. And then fishing line comes in different strengths. So eight pound test, 10 pound test, 20, 30, 50, uh, 40, 50, 60, 80, 100. So we have 300 SKUs, which is an inventory nightmare. Hmm. But what we do on Amazon is we take our top right now. I think I have 59 of our best selling SKUs in Amazon FBA. And then the rest is fulfilled by merchant. And then the rest is uh, um, obviously just in the warehouse. We have a warehouse here in Miami. Um, I use a 3PL. But basically what my ordering looks like is I order. I try to order once a month on the first of every month. And I put an order for our warehouse. And I put an order for Amazon FBA. Whether we need a big order, a small order. I, I now have uh, an inventory predicting software that is, I guess, working. I don't know. I used to do it. I used to contact the guy on Fiverr. I'm like, hey, can you make me an Excel sheet with like a formula? Just guessing. And I did that for a while. And I think I was just way over ordering. So this uh, this software has helped. But yeah, that's it. When you have a lot of SKUs, it's an inventory nightmare for sure. No, no doubt about that. That does make it challenging. Figuring out which ones you need to order. What are your best sellers? What's moving? What's going to be hot? Predicting all that. You've got seasonality uh, involved in your product. That's another issue that we can yeah. we can dive into for sure but i wanted to know since you did a i would call a reverse launch uh in terms of going d to c first and then expanding to other marketplaces a, a little different than than most when since you had built so much awareness around your product when you launched on amazon were you immediately getting sales on Amazon without doing much marketing or did you have to do a real push there as well? So, uh, yeah, I definitely think since we were spending so much money on Facebook, there was definitely people trickling over to Amazon 100% because someone like me, I, like I'm in the internet space. So I just think about this all the time when I see an ad or I want to buy something, I immediately check, go to Google and just type in the product, whether Amazon pops up or something else pops up. Uh, just to see if I can get a better deal and save a dollar. But I definitely think there was traffic trickling over. I tried to run ads in the beginning myself. I put up some automatic campaign, tried some uh, PPC ads and all that kind of jazz. And I was just like, this is, I don't feel like I could learn it. I can definitely learn it, take the time and become an expert at it. So I got a favor for uh, uh, an advertising agency for Amazon. And I decided to work with them and they, they were super awesome. Um, they definitely helped us scale. I think they helped us to our biggest month, the $90,000 prior. And then I actually, I met an investor through the company I was working at. He has a huge Amazon business. They did 70 million last year. And I went to, I went to go to go to his office in Tampa and they're actually, he's branching off a, a part of his business where they're buying and scaling them. So uh, they have an ad agency as well. And I decided to work with him because he's like, dude, let me just run your stuff. We'll, we'll do good for you. So now they're running our Amazon ads. What uh, overall now, okay, now you've, you've, you've launched Shopify, then you've gone into the different marketplaces. What, what's the, what do your sales look like per channel? Is, is Amazon 50% of your sales? What, what, what does it look like across the board? How you're, Sales come from different channels. I'm going to pull up our PL from last month so I can just read it to you. Uh, but right now, believe it or not, uh, Shopify is still our biggest channel. So Amazon last month did 141,000. Shopify last month did 190,000. Uh, eBay did about 10 grand and Walmart did about three grand. So Shopify, Amazon, eBay, Walmart, um, Walmart where I, I need to figure that out. I, 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 like I said, I just need to start running ads cause everything's up there. Um, I need to just hire an agency to do it. And I've been looking for an agency, but everyone is terrible. I like literally I need to follow up with them like hey can you guys help me out I'm trying to pay you money just start and there's been like four companies that I've reached out to and everyone is terrible it's like do you 
do you want to make money in your business? I'm, I'm literally giving you my money. Say, hey, please, I need help. And no one, it's, it's ridiculous, you know? But yeah, that's, that's the breakdown. It, it's interesting. I mean, that, that shows people should be focusing on an omni-channel approach um, as you grow. Your business. I mean, you got, you got to start somewhere. You got to build brand awareness somewhere, but, but there's customers are everywhere. It's whether or not you're in front of their preferred buying platform. Yeah. A hundred percent. Like, like, look, that, that my buddy's business who did 70 million, uh, they do, they were doing about five, 6 million a month on Amazon and their Shopify store was doing like 20,000 a month. So I actually tried to help him run ads for a, a short period of time. Um, but it was just kind of a mess because their store wasn't optimized. There's just a bunch of different things. They have so many products, but their best seller on Amazon. I'm like, dude, like that's the that's the thing. Something that sells very well on Amazon might not work for Facebook ads. Mm-hmm. So it's 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 they're just they're very different business models. And I tried his his best product has over seventy thousand reviews on Amazon, and I tried to run Facebook ads for that same product and that we had really good creatives we had really good um targeting but it just it, it just didn't work so mm-hmm. that's the game man some products work some products don't per per channel but building an omni-channel brand is by far like what excites me the most because that's how you build enterprise value if you eventually want to sell your business it, it, you bring it up a really good point we have this conversation all the time um about products that work um via different marketing tactics and via different um, marketplaces. <clears throat> and do you feel like the these fishing lines, do you feel like there is a um, like an awareness or an educational component that's involved in converting the sale that makes Facebook ads really effective because you're showing it in action, you're showing the benefits that is potentially harder to showcase on like just a flat Amazon listing? Partially. Yes. I like, I honestly, that's, that's a good angle. You take the educational, um, right. Let's just put an example, fishing line versus selling like a spatula. I'm sure a spatula sells millions of units a day, but you're not going to convince someone through a Facebook ad to buy just a wooden spatula. Like there's right. Facebook, Facebook is more like you just got to hype up the product and get someone really excited to buy it because it has some really, really cool features where some products on Amazon, they're just boring, generic, everyday, make much money on Amazon, but they're just not going to work that great for Facebook ads. Yeah, I totally agree. And I think that's where a lot of times, I mean, I've, I've spoken to many inventors uh, who are launching on Amazon and, and it doesn't work very well. And it's, it's, nobody knows there, no one's even searching for this product. They don't know it exists. They don't know that it's a need that they have. Um, and so in a situation like that, that's where Facebook, TikTok, influencers, exposure, showcasing it real. I mean, Amazon can still be your sales channel. They just have to learn about it first. Uh, and, and, and so like, Amazon ads in that situation don't work very well. There may no, there's no search volume. Yeah. Like, who do you, who are you targeting? Uh, so it's it's interesting. Um, and I I really like the play you made, just going Facebook ads D to C, building out that list. I'll, the other question I want to have is I want to go back to that list, the email list. Yeah. Um, again, obviously something everybody should be doing if you're building a brand is build that list. But how do you? How do you nurture that list? How do you keep the engagement? How do you keep them warm? So when you come out with a new product or hit them, you know, you got to do some, some warming up. You can't just can't be offer, 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 Mm -hmm. offer. Um, What are you doing tactically there? Yeah. So in the beginning, I started dabbling with email marketing myself just here and there. Um, Never did it before. Luckily, Shopify has very had, I think they still have it a very easy email system where they have the templates for you literally just drag and drop images and change the headline. So I started doing that and seeing like crazy results, like seven grand from one email I would send on like a a mother's day campaign. Right. I was like, what the heck? But I didn't have any uh, flows set up. So I didn't have any like, Hey, you buy something and two weeks later we're offering you a discount or stuff like that. Like the nurture, like you're saying. So what did I do? 
I outsourced it as well. So I found a really, really cool email marketing guy. And he's very, very good at being creative. Um, off, we'll sit down at once a month, say, Hey, this is what our schedule looks like. Let's plug in certain, uh, certain pieces of value, right? Like, Hey, these are my top three fishing spots. Hey, I love tying these fishing knots for this or, um, check out our new products. Right. So we literally just launched a new product, fishing pliers going away from fishing line. And we, I think in like three emails we sold like 15 grand of product directly to our our uh, our, our email list so um it's it's definitely not as uh easy as it seems because you like you said you do have to nurture the list you can't just be spamming them with deals all the time so there's there's a fine line between sending them value um sending just plain text emails like we sometimes we just send quick emails that it's like five lines and then my signature at the bottom like hey it's ryan here from the company Thank you so much for purchasing, blah, blah, blah. Um, and there's other, other times where the emails are a lot more graphic and we have a lot more visuals or we'll link a, a video to our YouTube video saying, hey, this is my favorite fishing knot. So just little things like that and providing value to the customer. What are you doing to get them to opt in? Like on the website, I mean, I guess I could go look, but what do you, what's your like opt in process to get people to send their email? Uh, so there's two ways. One is when they purchase, they automatically opt in, right? We, we capture their email. Two is I think when you're on the website for 15 seconds, a pop-up comes and say, hey, enter your email here. We'll email you a 10% off code. And that works really, really well. So like last month, just off that pop-up, I think we did 20 grand in sales, track sales from using that, that discount code of people coming in. So not only are we getting the sale, but we're collecting the email as well. Are you getting, are you doing Google ads as well to bring traffic? I'm sure you are like to the, to your website. Is it, is it Google, Facebook? What's, what's the combination of paid traffic look like? Yeah, Google, we were definitely running Google ads. They were working well. I think our account, uh, we just had some trials, uh, some tribulations there for a second, but here, let me pull up the PNL and I'll tell you exactly what we're spending. Uh, expenses, advertising and marketing. So Amazon ads, we spent 17,800. Facebook ads, we spent 34,000. Google ads, we spent 10 grand. Uh, we spent $3,000 on influencer marketing, guys on social media promoting our stuff. TikTok ads, which we started running last month, 4,200. Walmart ads, 200. So, on the influencer campaigns that you have, wh wh how do you find them? And then, what are you doing to like, compensate them? What are, are they like ambassadors? What's that look like? Yeah. So it's, um, right now I think we only have like a hand, like, like three or four guys that we actually pay on a monthly basis, a few hundred bucks just to continue to make content with our product. Cause they're fishing influencers on Instagram and YouTube. Um, so like, right. Our, our Instagram is growing very strongly right now organically and, um, they just make content for us. So I'm happy to compensate them because I know, their following is definitely purchasing from us, whether we track it through their code or not. <laughs> Did you guys hear my dog screaming? Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. Yeah, let me turn. Let me turn. It's usually my dog. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> Don't even worry about it. Hear me okay? Oh, yeah. yeah, we can yeah. Hear. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so we, we pay them. Uh, some And some guys, we just give them a discount code or some guys, we just give free product to make some promotional posts for us. We have a YouTuber that we don't pay. He has 600,000 subscribers. He just puts a link at the bottom of his video. Occasionally in his 20 minute video, he's like, I'm rigged up with Beyond Braid and their fluorocarbon leader today. That's it. And till this day, I think his code has generated like close to $20,000. And I offer his like 10% commission and he just, nah, man, it's cool. Send me the free product. That's it. Oh my <laughs> gosh. It's awesome. That's, it's awesome. That's a unicorn influencer right there that you found. Yeah, and look, there's bigger channels, right? But like, dude, some of the some of the ads are the the sponsorships that these YouTube channels want. Like, have you guys heard of Dude Perfect? Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> guess how much a, to sponsor a Dude Perfect YouTube video? Oh my is. gosh, I think again, um, hundred grand, five hundred thousand dollars for a thirty second. Oh plug. my gosh. Hey, if good you for get those it, guys. You get it. Yeah. Good for those guys. But I like, 
because so they sent me a deck and the companies they work with are bass pro chipotle uh like giant companies that that for them is a drop in a bucket when they told me that i was like i was just like that ain't gonna work guys sorry no, for for a tiktok works. post or an instagram reel it's 250 grand they're like is that better i'm like no i'm sorry <laughs> i i know how they can command that my kids watch them non-stop i mean i watch them non-stop they're awesome it's yeah it's they are cool it oh it's that's fascinating so you're offering uh you do have an affiliate program that you run through your site yeah it, it, and basically the affiliate program is if you're on social media or making cool content we'll send you free product we'll give you a discount code that's 10 percent off for your followers and then we pay you 10 commission, 10 percent commission off the sales you generate. Honestly, I'd say it barely generates money itself. I think it's just more of the brand awareness of people posting and other people seeing it, and they probably just go buy it directly and forget to use the code. So it's probably having an effect, but direct tracking dollars, it's not it's not huge, but it's it's there, you know. Uh, one one sort of final question that that's come to mind is so you're doing uh, you know google ads facebook ads um all those all that external advertising you're doing do you direct a hundred percent of that to your shopify site or do you sometimes send outside traffic to the amazon listing do you do anything with your outside traffic and change where it's going to help increase or boost in certain scenarios on those marketplaces no, honestly, every everything goes directly to our website, uh, aside from the Amazon ads, of course. I just think we're everywhere. Like there's there's a there's a fishing show every year in, in Orlando. It's called iCast. And I went last year, not even exhibiting as a booth, just me personally, and I was wearing my my company gear. And literally everyone recognized me because we push so hard on ads, whether it's on YouTube ads. Facebook ads, retargeting ads. So everyone in the fishing industry has seen my face. Um, but all that traffic goes to our website. So naturally, I think it just people just trickled over to Amazon. And that's how our luckily our Amazon grew. So now we we fluctuate anywhere from like number two to number five in the braided line category. And there's we only have like 2,400 reviews. The top one has like 22,000. But everyone in the top five has 10,000 more reviews than me, but we're still up there because we've just built the brand and people are searching for our product because they just see it everywhere, I think. So that's while we're necessarily not driving traffic directly to Amazon. I think people have just our brand is so top of mind that they just search for it on Amazon anyways. What's next? I mean, there's a fishing line, you got the pliers. What, what are you looking to get into next? So the way I think this business grows I think more or less we've kind of hit a cap with how much fishing line we can sell through Facebook ads. Um, could we do better? Probably yes. Cause there's probably the biggest companies in the world are probably selling tens of millions of dollars. But I think the way we grow our business through Amazon and launching different products. So right now I think I have six different products in the works of, like I said, fishing pliers. We got some uh, fishing shears, braided line cutters coming out fishing fillet knives, backpacks, tackle boxes, trying to do lures. So my next leg up is just add more products and grow our Amazon brand. There's a brand that I want to model and mimic, which is the brand's called Cast King. And they're basically number one in every fishing category. So I know they're crushing it. So I'm like, hey, that's essentially who I want to be like. So there's no problem with picking out a company in your in your industry and saying, that's who I want to be like. You, you don't have to copy them exactly. But you can get inspired by them and what they're doing and the products they're coming out with. Because at the end of the day, you can't reinvent the wheel, but you, you can just take the same wheel and put your own twist on it. You know what I mean? So that's that's the route we're going. And we just got to start adding products, which just takes time. You got to communicate with your supplier, get samples, get the design, the logos, make sure everything's right, get it shipped here, get the listing up, get reviews. So I think in two, three years will be a, a $10 million a year company. You know what I mean? But it, you just have to have the patience to look that far out and and just stick with the plan, you know? I like that. I, I, I have a few competitors that I've obviously tried to mimic too, and I'm sure Dustin does as well. Oh, yeah. But it's a good strategy. Like, hey, I want to be like these guys. I want to do what yeah. they're doing. 
Let's rebrand it with our messaging. Maybe we add something different to the product and read reviews and see what people don't like and switch it. It's definitely something to help you grow your business. Um, yeah. So my, my buddy who who uh, did does 70 million, I asked him, like, dude, like what like what's the secret? And like when launching new products that was, and I was he's just like, just look at the listing that's working and just do what they're doing. Uh, and it, it, like he launched a product that had almost the exact same title. I was like, it's like, yeah, dude, look, they're clearly making sales. It's clearly working for them. Just market it a little bit better. It's already working for them. Just go do that. And I was like, okay, that may, I guess Sometimes that makes sense. We, we make it too hard, right? Sometimes we make it yeah. too hard. Oh yeah. yeah. I, I mean, yeah. Imitation is the best form of flattery, right? And that's, the, that's, I mean, if it's working, Mimic, I do this stuff all the time. I, yeah. any yeah. competitor, any brand I want to be like, I'm getting into like their, uh, their all their email flows. I'm getting into. Uh, I go, I go through all their sequences. I'm like, how yeah. are they yeah. doing this? What is their, you know, what's their call to action? What, how exactly. are they presenting this? What are they doing? And you can learn a lot from them if they're if they're successful. There's nothing wrong with copying strategies and tactics. Uh, that's that's what I look my my label and design sorry for the the face on it but um there's a company in in fishing that does fishing line we look kind of similar to them i think we did it a little bit better but i was like i really like out of all the brands i think they have by far the best branding so like let's model that that look and that's exactly what we did and it worked out you know it's amazing Talk real quick because I know you put out a lot of content. People, I yeah. mean, they're listening now. They're hearing your story, and it's story, and it's it's amazing. And um, I know you do a lot of content. So, how can people follow you? Where where are you? Talk, talk about all the stuff you're doing. Yeah. So my personal Instagram and YouTube is just my first and last name, Ryan Maya, R Y A N M A Y A. Um, honestly, like growing a YouTube channel is extremely hard. Content is extremely hard. I full force right now i have all the gear i've been doing youtube for a long time but i'm really doing my best to open up the back end of my business like you can go to my youtube channel and watch some of my videos where i literally just tell you ex like exactly what i'm doing there's no secrets it's just sometimes action and implementation on your own in your own self to, to just do the thing that you got to do like there's no major secrets in this business i think there's so much education nowadays that the secrets are out there. It's just, you got to pick something and stick with it and actually do it. So um, I do that. I reveal a lot of stuff on my YouTube channel and my Instagram and TikTok as well. My first and last name, I somehow have 13,000 followers. there, the most followers of all the channels. <laughs> well, everyone should follow you. I'm going to go follow those. Uh, we've got them scrolling on the bottom of the screen here, uh, all your social channels. Cool. Uh, we'll also put them in the description so everyone can, can go follow. But Thanks for taking time out of your day to tell us your story. It's, uh, it's inspiring. It's encouraging. I wish when I was 25, I had your wisdom. I mean, it's it's fun to hear you talk. You talk like you are a seasoned veteran, but I mean, you talk like you've been doing this for a really long time. Um, but kudos to you on your hustle and and everything else that you're you're putting out there. Uh, so we'll. We'll definitely follow, and uh, we may have to Thank get you. you back. We may have to get you back on in the future just to get some updates uh, on 100%. what's going on and talk about what you're doing. That's that's new, and there's always new tactics to employ. So, yeah. Again, thanks, Ryan, so much. Uh, we really appreciate it, and thanks for everyone who is tuning in to this. Uh, we really appreciate it. If you like content like this, make sure you subscribe and li like our podcast, leave a review. You can see the live streams on Solozo's social media platforms, uh, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn. They're all there. You can get notified when we go live with really cool people like Ryan and listen to their stories. Uh, so make sure you subscribe to all those. And additionally, uh, if you're like Ryan, Ryan made a strategic, smart decision early on in his business where he was going to outsource some of the things that he either didn't want to do or um, felt like there was experts out there that could manage these things better. If that's the case for you in your Amazon business right now with Amazon advertising, uh, at Saloza, we'd love to help you. We work with clients of all sizes. Uh, we have a self-serve platform where we can help automate the advertising for you. And we also have fully managed uh, where you can have an account manager 
create and craft the strategies of your Amazon ads to help you meet your goals. So you can check us out at solozo.com. You can schedule a demo. We'd love to talk to you about your business and walk you through everything. Uh, so please check us out, solozo.com. All right, everybody, that's it for today. Thanks for tuning in.